Hello everybody, welcome to my channel and today we will discuss the fractional distillation or continuous multi-stage distillation of binary mixture. So in general, the separation of volatile liquid mixtures to relatively pure products can be achieved if you are using a fractional distillation method. So which is when you compare it to flash distillation or batch distillation it is more effective in giving a more pure product because yeah, there is a continuous distillation of uh, the vapor liquid mixture. So most of the time fractional distillation is used in crude oil or petroleum production. Here we are going to discuss more about binary mixtures, but in a crude oil, the feed may contain different organic compounds. On each stage of the distillation column, separation of multiple components of this organic component uh, can occur. So this crude oil, petroleum are mostly using such kind of distillation process. And also in alcohol industries, this fractional distillation column is applicable so the main process here is that you have a feed here so the feed it can be a liquid a vapor or a liquid vapor mixture at a saturated liquid or saturated vapor and it contains so in this case we are going to see binary mixture so the feed may contain component a and b where a is the more volatile component so the feed enters at a suitable uh, position so that means here you have a feed it can enter at different uh, trays depending on the type of mixture and temperature the feed can enter at different location so the liquid stream flows down the column so it will fall down through the trays and uh, collected at the bottom so when it reaches at the bottom if the feed is already heated it will evaporate at any point uh, into the trays and at the bottom here it's heated by a uh, reboiler so here the feed will be heated and vapor will be formed so this arrow shows the vapor so here the liquid will fall down but as soon as it's heated the vapor will be formed and it passes through each trace and the liquid also will fall down through the trace so once the liquid has reached at the bottom and it's heated and vapor will be uh, formed the vapor flows upward it passes the final trace so these are the trays that are used so the vapor passes through each tray and it will go uh, from the top so vapor flows upward through the trace and condenses so here you have a condenser the vapor here it's condensed and is collected in a reflex drum here at this point some of the liquid is returned back to the column so you have also here some liquid passing through each column and so you have liquid at the bottom here and also you have liquid at the top here at the same time the vapor will be rising from the bottom to the top so there will be some contact between the liquid and the vapor here uh, some part will be reflected back to the feed and some some of the some of the part will be collected as a product this vapor contains more of a which is the more volatile component and less b then uh, the liquid here you have seen at the bottom it will be sent to a reboiler and it will be partially vaporized and again feed back to the tower the bottom part and the liquid some of the liquid will be collected as a product so here at the bottom product you will have a large amount of the more the composition of b which is the less volatile component will be larger here so in fractional distillation you have you separate those two component a and b to the highest purity of the product so here at the bottom you have large amount of b and at the top you have smaller amount of b or larger amount of a from this you can understand that a contact between liquid and vapor occurs on a tray and the exchange of mass between them as you can see here there is a counter diffusion of component on each tray so liquid will pass down vapor will go up there is a contact and uh, some of the component a in the in the liquid may pass to the vapor and some of the component b in the vapor may pass to the liquid so here you can see there is a counter diffusion of components occurring. Uh, so there are terminologies that are used in a distillation, in a fractional distillation process. So for example, here, when you say total condenser, that means all the vapor leaving the top column is condensed, totally, completely condensed. So the this composition here, the reflex and the total product have the same composition because all the vapor is condensed. So when you say if all the vapor leaving the top 
column is condensed and if the vapor leaving top tray has the same composition as the liquid display then you say it's total uh, condenser when you say partial condenser then this vapor produced is uh, not totally condensed or it's partially condensed and the composition of the reflex here the composition of the reflex and the overhead product or the distillate is not the same so they have different composition for for total condenser the composition since all the vapor is condensed here the composition here and uh, here at the overhead product are the same but when it's a partial condenser then the condensed flux the reflex and the product have different uh, composition and the other is ideal stage when you say an ideal stage tray ideal stage that means on these trays there will be a vapor liquid equilibrium so the liquid leaving and the vapor leaving at the trays are at their bubble point and dew point respectively that means the liquid leaving one tray and the vapor leaving at one tray they are for the liquid the temperature is at its bubble point and for the vapor the temperature is at its dew point so ideal stage when you say ideal stage there is a vapor liquid equilibrium and both the uh, the liquid is at its bubble point and the vapor is at its uh, dew point then you can also have enriching section and uh, stripping section so when you say enriching section it's the section above the feed point so that means the section above the feed point means the this area above the feed point it's called enriching section it's called enriching section because above the feed point component a is has higher uh, concentration or the amount of component a the more volatile component is higher than uh, the previous tray above the feed point then you have a vapor which is richer in the more volatile component so that's why it's called enriching section and the section below below the feed point is called the stripping section so this stripping section is called stripping section because below the feed tray uh, more volatile component a is removed or stripped out of the liquid so here the more volatile component of A will be stripped out of the liquid. So below the feed point, the column is called the stripping section. And you have also reflex ratio. So here reflex ratio, that means the ratio of the reflex at the back to the top to the overhead product or the display. So reflex ratio R means this amount or the reflex amount divided by the overhead product here, the display. And the other is trace yeah these are uh, trace is placed uh, shown here so you have different you can have different type of trace you can have sieve trace or bubble cap trace and bulb trace and etc these trays are specially designed based on their type the design is different but the idea is that it has to allow the vapor to pass upward and allow there there should be a contact it, it should allow the contact between vapor and liquid and the liquid should pass uh, through the tray so in any distillation column then the calculation of the number of tray is important for any design of a fractional distillation column the first important thing is to uh, develop analytical approach to determine the necessary number of plates uh, the first thing for any design you have to know the heat and material uh, flow over the trays in condenser and reboiler so it has to be established and thermodynamic data are required to establish how much mass transfer is needed to establish equilibrium between uh, streams leaving each tray so for calculation of any uh, theoretical number of stage uh, mostly we are going to assume here it's a markup tla method we are going to use a markup tla method so here the main assumptions are there is a cumular overflow through the tower between the feed inlet and the top tray and the feed inlet and the bottom tray for each uh, stripping section or rectifying section or enriching section so when you say rectifying that means also enriching section and stripping section so here a detailed representation is placed here so the feed enters here above the feed it's a rectifying or enriching section uh, below the feed it's a stripping section so what's assumed is that for each amount of uh, flow there will be a cumular overflow so the amount that's leaving here and entering to the next uh, 
tray will be equal in both in vapor and in the liquid uh, situation. So this is true if the molar heat of vaporization of the mixture does not depend upon the composition or temperature in the column. So for market T limited to determine the number of theoretical stage, this assumption is uh, this assumption is uh, used. And also for heat of loss from the column is uh, negligible. So the heat of loss throughout the system, throughout the column is negligible. So if you assume two, two of these, then you can divide the whole uh, distillation column in different uh, sections. So for example, if you uh, or if you make an overall balance or envelope four, that means this is the overall balance. So envelope four means uh, this one. So if you make an overall material balance and energy balance on this envelope four, then you will find the total material balance will be F will be equal to D plus W. So the amount of feed entering here will be equal to the top product plus the bottom product. Or if you make a component A balance or component balance on the more volatile component, then F with ZF having a ZF mole fraction or mass fraction. F, F times ZF will be D times XD. So XD means the mole fraction or mass fraction in the top product plus W times XW or W times mole fraction of more volatile component in the liquid phase. And if you make energy balance and total energy balance, then you can say that F times HF, which is HF will be the enthalpy of the feed plus Q will be so QB is the amount of heat added in the reboiler, which is equal to D times HD. D times HD means the enthalpy of the distillate plus W times HW or W times enthalpy of the bottom product plus QC or heat released from the uh, condenser. So this is the overall material balance for the, any uh, distillation column, uh, any for any fractional distillation column. So if you only consider the, if you only consider the uh, condenser, if this is V1 or the amount of vapor leaving from the top tray or the number one tray, if you want to count the tray from top to bottom, then this will be the top tray will be number one tray. So the amount that is leaving the top for the top tray will be V1. And the amount that is recycled, so this is the uh, reflex column, so it's reflected and some liquid will pass through here and some will be collected as a product. And here you have some heat released. So if you want to make material balance over here, L0 over D, that means the amount that is reflected to the product, L0 over D will be R, which is the reflex ratio. So if you make a total material balance, so V1 entering will be equal to the summation of L0 plus D or V1, which is equal to L0 plus D will be D times R plus 1. And if you want to make a component balance on the more volatile component A, then V1 times Y1. So here V1 will contain Y1 mole fraction of the more volatile component will be equal to L0 times X0. L0 will have X0 a mole fraction of uh, more volatile component in the liquid phase times D times XD. Or if you want to make energy balance, the same as before, H1 times HV1 will be L0 times H plus HL0 plus D times HD plus QC. So this will be the general material and energy balance based on total material balance component A balance and the energy balance. So based on this, you can calculate the QC or heat load from the condenser uh, can be calculated. So if you consider envelope two or the enriching section, so the enriching section, which is uh, here, this part, the enriching section, you have here the output D, the total uh, distillate, then you have inlet and outlet. Outlet. So you have on the end tray, on the end tray, you have V n plus one, and you have L n. So here in this tray, 
you have the liquid leaving this tray and the vapor entering this tray. So if you want to make a material balance based on the reflex ratio, so L0 over D, which is R, the reflex ratio. Uh, so since we assume that cumulus uh, flow, that means for on each tray, the flow of the amount of the, uh, the mole of each liquid passing through each tray will be equal. So you will find simplify, you can simplify this equation by relating with the reflex ratio R plus 1 is equal to V over D. So the total material balance will be total material balance will be V n plus 1 or the amount of buffer entering from the previous tray will be equal to the amount that's leaving Ln plus D. Ln plus D. So the amount that the vapor that enters the last tray will be equal to the liquid that's leaving or that this liquid this liquid ln is the same as the one we said before here the amount will be the one that is reflected back will be ln value so ln i mean vn plus one is equal to ln plus d will be the total material balance if you want to make a component balance then vn plus one times yn plus one will be ln times xn plus d times xd and also for energy balance using the enthalpy of each uh, tray on this tray then vn plus one times h vn plus one will be ln times hln plus dhd plus qc if you make Based on the assumption that there is a cumulus flow, then Vn plus 1 will be equal to V or the amount that is entering to the condenser. Or you can take it as the total V. Then you can say that V times Yn plus 1 or this equation, the component uh, A balance equation, Vn plus 1 will be substituted by V. V times Yn plus 1 will be L times xn plus d times xd so if you simplify this equation or if you divide this equation by v if you divide this equation or overall by v then yn plus 1 will be equal to l over v xn plus d over v xd this will be when you simplify it l over d over v over d xn plus x over d xd over v d will be uh, the equation then finally l over d over v over V over D means R over R plus 1. So you can place this equation. You can simplify this equation by using this uh, final equation. So this equation, it's called, uh, this is called the operating line of the rectifying section on or the enriching section. Or sometimes, or most of the time it's called top operating line. So this is a straight line. If you see this equation it is y is equal to mx plus b4 so it is a straight line and this is straight line this equation is a straight line on the xy plane so this xy plane is if you have the if you have two components a and b and if they have the vapor liquid equilibrium diagram diagram or yx uh, diagram on that diagram if you make if you draw this line then you'll have the slope if you draw this up top operating line, you will have a slope r over r plus 1 and, and an intercept xd over r plus 1. So this intercept will pass on the x in the y axis and this will be the slope. And also this equation is satisfied if xn is equal to xd. So xn means this mole fraction in the top tray will be the same as here xd if it is a total condenser yn plus 1 will be also xd because yn plus 1 is the amount the mole fraction of the vapor entering uh, on the last tray so here if it's totally condensed then the concentration inter here will be the same as the concentration of the distillate so the straight line so that uh, this is straight line having a slope of r over r plus 1 passing through the intercept xd over r plus 1 will pass through a, a point xd xd so that means the y value will be the value of the xd or mole fraction of the distillate
So this equation will pass through the line xd, xd. And if you want to make calculation on the envelope 3 or on the bottom section or the stripping section, then you do a material balance. So this bar shows this flow rate is below the fill point line or on the stripping section. So here you have uh, LM liquid entering in the given N stray and you have VM leaving the M stray. So here this is leaving this LM amount is entering on the top uh, on the given tray. When you make a total material balance, the one that enters here or LM will be equal to VM plus bottom product uh, W. And if you make a component balance, LM times XM will be equal to VM plus 1 times YM plus 1 plus WXW. And the energy balance will be represented by this equation. If we simplify this equation, then since we said that there is a Q cumulative uh, flow, the assumption is that if there is cumulative flow, then LM plus 1 and uh, VM plus 1 and LM will be L bar and VM plus 1 will be V bar. So you'll find this equation, you simplify this equation to this equation. Then YM plus 1 will be L over V XM minus W over V XW. If you divide this equation by V, simplifying it and getting YM plus 1 to the right, then you'll find this equation. So finally, this will be the operating line of the stripping section or the bottom operating line. So YM plus 1, which is equal to L over L minus W XM minus W over L minus W XW will be the bottom operating line. So this bottom operating line is also uh, it's, it's in the form of Y is equal to MX plus B. So this equation, this is the equation of operating line of a stripping section. The slope will be L over L minus W. The intercept will be minus w over l minus w and it passes through the point xw xw so in any uh, fractional distillation based on the Machiav till method you have two operating lines on the uh, xy graph of uh, the vapor liquid equilibrium of two components so the bottom operating line and the top operating line top operating line have a slope r over r plus one and intercept xd over r plus one and it passes through the point xd xd and the bottom operating line will have a slope of l over l minus w and it will pass through the point xw and xw so if you have some of the information of the distillation column for any fractional distillation column the feed amount or the bottom product concentration or the top product concentration is or purity is given so based on those given equation you can determine the number of trays required or the bottom and top operating lines that are required here. So similar to the reflex ratio defined for the rectifying section, you can define also a quantity called uh, boil-up ratio, RV, for the stripping section. So here RV will be moles of vapor leaving the reboiler per hour over moles of liquid drawn as the bottom product per hour. So this is a, a simple representation of operating lines. So this is your Y versus X equilibrium graph. So this curve will show the Y versus X equilibrium graph. So this point will be, this point is XD, XD. That means Y value, which is equal to X value. So here, for example, it's 0 0.95. So XD will be, the x value will be 0 0.95 and also in the y it will be 0 0.95 so this is this line will have the uh, if you find this point then and if you find the intercept xd over r1 then you can draw this straight line so this straight line will be the top operating line the top operating line will, which have a slope r over r plus one and you have some equation here. The equation of the line will be represented here. So the slope here, r over r plus 1, will be 0 0.667. And the intercept will be, after some calculation, 0 0.317 or xd over r plus 1. So this is the top operating line. And you have here 
uh, bottom operating line or operating line for the stripping section so this will be the bottom operating line so at this point if you find xw value then the point xw xw can be drawn here at this point xw xw will be found so xw means the concentration of the bottom product and if you find the slope the operating line of the stripping section so the slope is 1.509 or which is which is equal to l over l minus w so you can have this bottom operating line and here top operating line and this is the equilibrium line so based on this graph using markev till method you can determine the number of trays so at this point here the bottom operating line and top operating line intersect so this intersection point is the point where the feed enters on the next video we will do one exercise on uh, markev till method to determine the number of stage how we can determine the number of stage of the binary